I want to start today's show off by asking guys a random question. Who had a better career, John Elway or Peyton Manning? Put the jersey number for the player you think had a better NFL career as a whole. Both won two Super Bowls. Both played in very different generations. So I go with Peyton Manning because I got to watch him play. But if you want to go with Elway, that works too. Let me know in the comments section who you think had a better career to start today's show. Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Matthew Peterson. Coming up on today's show, we're going to check out Mel Kuyper's NFL draft grade. So the NFL draft guru and his pumpkin pie and whipped cream checked out every single team's draft picks and gave him a letter grade. So we're going to see how he graded Denver while just kind of refreshing our memory and getting to know these rookies a little bit better. First up, let's refresh our memory on who Denver selected. They went Nick Benito, edge rusher out of Oklahoma, to start day two off at 64. Greg Dulcich, tight end out of UCLA. They moved back five spots in a trade with the Colts. Damari Mathis liked this pick a lot. We'll tell you more about him later on. Corner from Pitt. EU, as I like to call him, Iowa State defensive tackle right after Mathis. And then DeLaren turner Yell, safety from Oklahoma in round five. Moving on to the final four picks, Montreal Washington. Wide receiver slash kick returner from Samford, who's got some awesome speed and some Devin Hester-esque to him. Luke Wattenberger, Washington center later on. Matt Henningsen, defensive tackle from Wisconsin. Happy belated birthday, Matt. And then finally, they go corner Matt Fan, uh, Fayon, the Wisconsin. They go back-to-back -back Badgers. How cool was that for those two guys to get a U-Haul together and drive out to Mile High? So, grade the Broncos NFL draft. There are their nine picks. We'll check out Kuiper's grade in a second, but take this as an opportunity to get your own grade in, see how you fare up against Mel Kuiper's grades. Mel Kuiper thought B-, and honestly, I really don't hate that. I know that maybe what you want an A, but you can't all get A's, especially when your first and your second round pick, well, your first second rounder, was Russell Wilson. That's the way you look at it. Who'd you pick in the first round? Russell Wilson. You also got an additional third round pick in this draft, which I'm a big fan of. Denver doesn't have a first or a second next season. And remember, this year they had the Rams second and third, which kind of alleviated that loss. But next year, you really want to wait until the third round for your first pick? Maybe, but now you have two picks in round three at least. Overall, Kuiper, I thought he was a bit lazy. He gave out just two A's, 28 B's, and two C's. Come on, give some D's, give some F's, spread it out a little bit more. Don't just give two A's, two C's, and everyone else is in the middle at B. But let's look at Kuiper's notes. Here's what he said about the, at least the Benito pick to start. I like their top pick enough because Nick Benito is a fit for their 3-4 defense. He already is advanced as a pass rusher and is fast off the snap. He led the FBS in pressure percentage last season at 18.3%. He needs to get much better against the run, though, because he is going to struggle to play on early downs. I'm very excited to see what Nick Benito can do in 2023. He's going to be sitting behind Chubb and Randy, Randy Gregory and be splitting a little bit with Malik Reed, and that's fine because you didn't pick him in the first round, so you don't have to expect him to be a year one contributor. But the idea of like what uh, Kuiper got at, got to improve at the run defense, but he's got the quickness, he's got the burst. Let him come in in obvious passing situations, and plus, I, I'm, I knock on wood, but... Bad chance, a decent chance Chubb or Gregory misses some time because they both have the last, well, Gregory's entire career and Chubb since his rookie season. Other Kuiper notes from the draft uh, is great. Greg Dulcich is my second ranked tight end, and he should take a bunch of the vacant snaps left by Noah Fant going to Seattle. This was a big hole for Denver. Cornerback Damari Mathis ran a 4.39 second 40 at the combine, while Iwa Iwazuki was a four-year starter at Iowa State, and he could play defensive end in the Broncos scheme. Listen, in round three, when you're a team like Denver, who doesn't have obvious needs, which they really didn't going into the draft, you just wanted to tighten things up, I love depth and developmental picks. Because I think about the Broncos DB room. Sure, you got Sertan, and you just signed K1 Williams, but you've also got Darby, signed a three-year contract, pretty friendly get out of two years. So maybe the plan is to let... Uh, you know, Mathis kind of sit-ish for a year. Not sit, but just not have a lot of attention on him. Grow. And the same for EU. You've got some names in front of him. You've got Draymond Jones. You've also signed DJ Jones. You've got uh, Mike Purcell. So, four-year guy. And also, what I like a lot about EU was he could bounce around that 
3-4 front. He can play the 5 technique, your defensive end. But you could also have to maybe move him inside. Maybe put him at a, a 1-3 to three technique as well. Do you agree with Mel Kuyper's B- minus grade? A for agree, D for disagree. When you don't have a first round or second... Well, they had a second round pick, but not until the, at the end. So we don't have a first and a predominant second round pick. It's hard to get above a v, B-. minus. You know? You, you didn't bring a splashy name in. And that's fine. Because the splashy name was... Russell Wilson. So we'll check. We'll talk more about the players in just a second. But I just wanted to thank everyone who subscribed to the channel over the NFL draft. Got the final data here, final numbers. Before the draft, we had 7,489. Post draft, we picked up hundreds of subs. We're knocking on the door of 8,000 subscribers, in large part to putting out eight videos during the NFL draft. That's a lot of content for a team that didn't even have a first round pick. So if you're coming across our channel for the first time and you're wondering what the heck is this, we give out free daily Broncos content, keeping you in the know on everything related to the Broncos. So hit that big red button and subscribe. Like I said, no first round pick or early second rounder. B minus, that's fine. You got to remember, C is average, you know. And of course, we all shoot for A's, but this isn't really like school. It's not like when you get a B- minus on a test, you're like, oh, I wish I did a little better. Yeah, but this test was rigged because you couldn't answer the first seventh of the questions. You know what I mean? You didn't have a first-round pick, and you didn't pick until the end of round two. So look at it that way. You could only answer so many questions, and you still ended up with a B-? minus. I'll take it. And then when you got Nick Benito, we can show you his stats as well. I like this pick a lot at 64. In my mock drafts, I commonly had Denver picking Benito at 64, so I kind of felt like a big brain right there. But seven sacks, a forced fumble last season. Listen, Oklahoma is not what you think of. When you think of defense, you don't think of the Big 12, and you don't usually think of Oklahoma. But their defense was awesome last season. So the fact that you were able to get someone who made you think of defense for Oklahoma, pretty cool. The scouting report on this guy Awesome moves as a speed pass rusher. He doesn't have that uh, bulldozing strength. You know what I mean? He's not going to push you down with his left arm on his way to the quarterback. But he may just be a pass rusher. This is what Kuiper was talking about. Have to see him grow. Have to see him be able to stop the run. Because you can't just take some plays off in the NFL. But a little bit of coaching will go a long way for this player. We'll talk more about the Broncos draft picks and get to know them better in just a second. But I want to tell you about our sportsbook partner today, BetUS. They give you a 125% deposit bonus. We're going to chatsports.com slash bet. Plug in the promo code in, Broncos125. It's like getting a pizza and then getting another pizza for free and then getting a couple more slices for free. What can you bet on? Well, there's no Broncos to bet on, but the Kentucky Derby is coming up. And my favorite pick, and I just go purely off the name. That's how I that's how I bet at the track. Tis the bomb. There's not very there's not many good names this year. I was really trying to pick. What's that, Jeremy? No, no second. So producer Jeremy's like secretariat. No, is it, what, what, what year are you living in? Um, Tis the bomb plus three thousand, which means if you bet a hundred, you're gonna win three thousand dollars. So he's a long shot, and I think the favorite has won like four or five years in a row now. But uh, why not? The the, the streak's got to end at some point. So ride with me over at BetUS. Moving on to the next pick, Dulcich. The more I uh, Dulcich, the more I like, the more I watch this guy, the more I like him. His biggest knock was that he doesn't have getaway speed. He doesn't have that separation speed. I don't know what film they were watching because when I saw him catch the football, he wasn't type the player that just put it between here, put his head down, and tried to run in one direction and get out of bounds or hope no one caught him before he got to the end zone. No, he had a lot of great moves. He was spinning out of tackles. He was extending plays. He was dragging defenders to the goal line. The numbers last season, 725 yards, five touchdowns. He doesn't offer you a ton in run blocking, and he's got to get better at growing that route tree, but I like a lot from what I saw out of him at UCLA. Other players that were picked, Damari Mathis and Iwi Iwama Iwazuki. I got to nail that down, hand up, but... There are, there's other career stats. They both had long careers. Mathis at Pitt and Iwu at Iowa State. Um, Iwu played six seasons and accumulated 15 sacks. Meanwhile, for Mathis, five interceptions and 18 PBUs. For Mathis, 
the speed and improving ball skills is what I like to see a lot out of him. He's got the speed, okay? So, uh, ran under a 4-4 at his 40, and he's got the ability to track the football in. He's getting better and better at that. That was the thing that you saw the most growth at. Now, is he the best open field tackler? No. That's why he kind of went in the fourth round. But, hey, that's something you can work on in the NFL. Not easy to work on speed. You can work on tackling. As for our friend who gives me a tongue twister every time, Iwu, um, great fit for a 3-4 defense. Like I mentioned kind of off the top, you can start him off at a defensive end, which Denver's kind of looking for, right? Because you signed DJ Jones, who's going to be a nose tackle, when you already had one in Mike Purcell. And you lost Shelby Harris, and you didn't really replace him in free agency. So I think he could be a real contender to try and start on opposite of Draymond Jones on this 3-4 defense. One last time, let's revisit some of these picks, and I'll add some more notes I've got. Turner Yell, that guy just loves to hit people. He watches Friday Night Lights before every single game and just goes out there and tries to lay the hammer down. All right, Love what I saw to Turner Yell out of Oklahoma. Good pick in round five, especially with K-Jack coming back on a one-year deal, which you got to envision as the end of his time there. Um, Turner Yell and Caden Stearns could be a nice battle. Some, Pac uh, some Big 12 action right there. Montreal, Washington, please be the next holiday, you know? Please be the next returner. Special teams sucked last year. No spark, no energy came from it. That's got to change. Wattenberger, uh, Wattenberg, the interior of the offensive line was a little underwhelming last year is a good way to put it, I'd say, between Reisner, Cush, and Glasgow. So you bring in some competition. And also, it's day three. No bad picks. No bad picks between our two Badgers here, round six and round seven. It's tough. Not many round six, round seven guys make it. So you just look to find someone you think may not even be the biggest position of need necessarily, but a player that is good at football and maybe has a chance down the line, contributes on special teams, and can make an impact on the 53-man roster. Who was your favorite pick? Benito? I think I'm kind of gravitating towards Dulcic. I, I, I like him a lot. The more I like, the more I watch. The more I watch, the more I like out of this guy. Let me know who your favorite pick is down below. One final note, by the way, the NFL just announced right before we started filming the rookie minicamp dates. So Denver's rookie minicamp dates is May 13th and 14th. So that's starting 10 days from now. Just two days. Some teams went with three. I think the Bengals just went with one. I thought that was kind of weird. Um, but yeah, so those are the dates. We'll have more content on the rookies later on. Once you can see, get to see them on the field. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Wrap up today's show. Follow me at Matthew PD. Always tweeting about the NFL, talking about the Broncos, keeping you guys informed. Trying to grow my Twitter platform. Want to reach 1,000 followers. Cross 500 during the draft. Almost at 700. So shoot me a follow. I'll follow you back as long as you don't tweet about weird stuff. So that's going to do it for us on today's show. Appreciate everyone that made the Broncos breakdown a part of your day. And I'll see you later with more Broncos news and rumors.